In this video, we're going to use some general properties of definite integrals to evaluate some other definite integrals. So here we have two pieces of information that we know. The integral of a function f of x from 0 to 2 with respect to x is 3. The same function, we can do the integral from 2 to 6, and that's going to be negative 2. So what you'll notice here is the first one goes from 0 to 2, and the second one picks up where this one left off at 2, and then goes all the way to 6. So in this first example, we're going to do the integral from 0 to 6 of our function with respect to x. As you'll see, this starts at 0, where the first one started, and ends at 6, where the second one ended. And since this one picked up right where this one left off, we have all the values from 0 to 6 covered. 0 to 2, 2 to 6. So what we can say is we can break this down, and this actually equals the integral from 0 to 2 of our function plus the integral from 2 to 6 of our function. Okay, so what's this first one? Well, that's going to be 3. And what's the second one? Well, that's going to be negative 2. So what we're going to say is the integral from 0 to 6 of our function is 1. And that's the first example. In our second example, we have the exact same definitions up here. And we're looking for the integral from 6 to 2 of our function with respect to x. Well, what we see up here is we're given the integral from 2 to 6, but this one's 6 to 2, so it looks like our limits of integration have been switched. Well, we have a really nice property here, which says when we hit the integral from a to b, we can switch those limits of integration to b to a by simply putting a negative out front. So these are opposites of one another. So what does that mean we can do? That means we can do the opposite of from 2 to 6 of our integral. Well, we know that the integral from 2 to 6 is negative 2, so this will be the opposite of negative 2, which will equal positive 2. So anytime you want to change the limits of integration on an integral to perhaps make it easier, all you have to do is put a negative out front. In this third example, once again, we'll start with our same definitions. And we're looking for the integral from 2 to 2 of our function with respect to x. Well, we don't really have 2 to 2 necessarily. I have 0 to 2 and then 2 to 6. But I do have this property of definite integrals which says if the limits of integration here are the same, like a to a, then I know the integral of our function is just 0. Because if you think about it as far as finding the area under the curve, if the width goes from a to a, the width is 0. So anything times 0, it doesn't matter what the height is, you're still going to get 0. So what's the integral from 2 to 2? Well, it's going to be 0. And that's the third example. In this fourth example, again, same definitions, and we're looking for the opposite of the integral from 2 to 0 of our function f of x with respect to x. Once again, it looks like our limits of integration have been switched. So if we go ahead and switch them back, I'll be taking the opposite. Well, it's already a negative, so let's make it a positive. From 0 to 2 of f of x dx. Well, that actually is one of my definitions I have up here. So that value will just be 3. In our fifth and final example, we're trying to evaluate this expression. It's twice the integral from 0 to 2 of our function, minus 5 times the integral from 2 to 6 of our function. So these 2 and this negative 5 out here just function as constants. So once we find the values of these integrals, we can just multiply them by the constants. Well, these values are nice because they're given to us up here in the definitions. So example 5 will be 2 times this integral, which is 3, minus 5 times the integral from 2 to 6, which is negative 2. So we have 6 plus 10, which is 16. So those are just five short examples of how we can use general properties of definite integrals to find the values of all kinds of other definite integrals.